Hello and welcome to day three of the podcasting challenge. Now, hopefully you are, you have your solid foundation created for your podcast. You know what equipment you want to get. And now it's time to really dive into how you can actually stand out from the crowd. Uh, because as you know, more and more people are diving into podcasting. More and more people want to create podcasts. And so it's going to be more and more difficult to actually set yourself apart and really attract the right listeners to your show. So that's what we're actually going to talk about on today's video of the challenge is we're going to dive in to how you can actually stand out for those right people, for those right audience members who will eventually convert to paying customers and clients down the road. So there are really three ways, three things you really need to think about when, we're try when we talk about standing out and they are how do you, how do you get found? How do you get listeners and how do you get fans? So for this very first one, we're going to talk all about how you can actually get found. iTunes is by far the biggest podcast directory out there. Uh, this is where most people go to get, pod get their podcasts or even if they're using some other podcast player, a lot of times they actually plug in directly to the iTunes directory. Uh, so we want to make sure that you are optimizing your podcasts in, uh, in some ideal ways, you know, doing correct search engine optimization because really iTunes is a big search engine. It's very similar to Google in that way. Uh, and we also want to make sure that you can be found on Google as well uh, for some keywords that your ideal cl clients are really looking for. So it's important to really take some time and consider what are those five to 10 keywords or keyword phrases that my client, my ideal audience member is looking for. So that's really kind of your preliminary step before you even move into some of this other stuff is to really go through and figure out what are those five to 10 keywords or keyword phrases that clients are actually searching for. So that'll be your first action step is to go figure that out. But then once from there, you're gonna to wanna to consider a few things when it comes to getting found in iTunes. And those are your actual podcast title. Uh, those are your author name and those are your ep episode titles. So really those are the key areas we need to focus in on because descriptions aren't actually searchable uh, in iTunes or and then there's several other things that really won't benefit you, but those three areas will. So with your title, too often I see podcasters uh, who wanna come up with some very creative, fancy title. Creative titles can be nice, uh, they can work well for you, but what you wanna make sure you do is that even if you decide to go a creative route for whatever reason, you wanna make sure that you actually have some keywords there after that. So I'll show you a few examples of some great potential podcast titles. All right, so here we are in the iTunes business category. Uh, and I just wanna kind of show you what the iTunes store looks like and kind of show you some of the different elements that are really gonna stand out when we talk about getting found. So first, before we kind of dive into too much, you can see right here, the very first thing at the very top of the category is new and noteworthy. New and noteworthy, your podcast is considered new and noteworthy if you are within the first 56 days and you're only competing, you're still, the same algorithm applies, but you're only competing against other podcasts that are within that 56 day window. So these are all newer podcasts. Uh, you can see some of the different titles, some of the different ones that are standing out. Um, so the title is very searchable. Let's check this one. So here's Optimal Finance Daily, the best of personal finance, minimalism, and investing. So very filled with keywords. Um, optimal Living Daily, reading the best. Okay. Okay, so this, what, I think they did a great job with the title. I think their author name was not done very well. Um, but it also depends. It looks like they're actually going out there and grabbing things and just kind of reading other people's blog posts. Um, interesting way to go about podcasting, but I, have, I haven't dove into it enough to actually know what they're doing or how this is actually working. But yeah, I do like the way their title is filled with key. I think their title is a great title. Um, so this is an example of the new and noteworthy, but you're also gonna notice under here we have the what's hot. What's hot is basically the top podcasts. Uh, so here, let's check out these guys. Uh, Jordan at the Art of Charm. I, this is one of the first podcasts I actually ever listened to back in uh, 2007, I believe. You know, notice how their podcast title looks. I think that's an excellent one. Art of Charm that really is not very creative. It kind of tells what they're gonna be talking about. 
Uh, so they're not trying to get too cute and too fancy while still there is a little element of creativity there. But then they're also diving in with keywords such as social science, cognitive psychology, confidence, relationship advice, biohacking, and productivity. And then they have the name of both Jordan, who is the host, and then the art of charm, which is the business. Uh, let's see who else we have here. Um, Eric at uh, Beyond the To-Do List does another great job. So Beyond the To-Do List, personal productivity perspectives. Eric Fisher, productivity podcaster, author, and coach. Um, so that's not too bad of one in terms of adding keywords in his author name. Uh, Pat does a great job of this. Uh, so Ask Pat, that is kind of a more creative title, I guess, if sort of. Um, it doesn't tell you much other than that you're asking Pat, but pe many people might not have any idea who Pat is or what they would be even ask him about, but the rest of his title does a great job of that. Your online business, blogging, marketing, and lifestyle design question answered daily. That tells him exactly what is happening with this podcast. It's a daily podcast. He's answering these type of questions. It's also very keyword rich. Uh, online business, blogging, marketing, lifestyle design. Those are all keywords he wants to rank for. And then you have your author name here, Pat Flynn. Uh, again, getting in, uh, getting more online business. Uh, another spot where they actually getting that keyword in. So his title is phenomenally done really well there. Oh, and look at that. There is actually a client's of ours. Let's just quick look at that since he's here. Achieve your goals with Hal Orad. Uh, so getting name a couple times in keywords. And then we talk about the keywords success, productivity, personal development, lifestyle, and business. And then we even get a few here. More essentially titles, but we also want to rank for author, keynote speaker, and success coach. So that is another example of how to actually help get found. So there you have it. That's kind of the get found piece of iTunes. As you can see, even for the creative titled podcast, we are diving in and actually using keywords within that title to make sure that it is found when our, when our potential audience members are searching. We want to come up very highly for those ideal audience members. The next thing you really want to consider is the author name. And uh, that is also searchable as well. So you're going to do something similar. You're going to have your name. Uh, because we want to make sure that that is still prominent, that people are finding you, who are searching for your name are going to find your podcast because you will, you know, as you are growing your brand, growing your business, people are going to start searching for you specifically and we want to make sure it's easy for them to find you. So be sure to include your name. I, we've had that. I've seen that happen in the past. That mistake kind of happened. Uh, so be sure to include your name. I would also recommend if you are going under a business name, for example, for us, your podcast guru, uh, we also want to make sure that is in the author name somewhere. And then if there's still room, if uh, it still makes sense, we're going to plug a couple additional keywords like motivational speaker or coach or something else like that, where we're going to kind of help narrow down uh, the market a little bit more so that we're still showing up when people are searching for those specific keywords. The other area that you really want to think about is that each episode title is also searchable. So you're going to want to use keywords in your episode titles over and over again as you kind of continue to build up your episodes. Obviously, you're, hopefully this is obvious, but don't just stuff keywords in your episode titles. Uh, you want to make sure that the content within that episode actually makes sense to be, uh, and, you know, and create a title that makes sense based off of the content that is in the episode. But if you can, you know, add your keywords in a very effective way and, and really because there's stuff that you want to be found for, a lot of your content should be created around your keywords. So if you want to be found for business to business marketing, a lot of the content you're going to create is going to be based off of business to business marketing. So it will naturally yield itself to being in your episode title. So these, while you want to pay attention to keywords and really think about how you're using them, Ultimately, what you're trying to do is create content that one that a person wants to consume, not necessarily play to the robots, because the robots are continuing to get better and better. And ultimately, you are trying to get solid, high-quality listeners, and you're only going to get that if you actually play to that human, to that individual. So those are the things to really consider when you want to get found in iTunes. It's really uh, podcast title, author name, episode titles. 
So once you uh, really look at how you can actually be found through a search engine, then you really want to think about, okay, how do I get people to actually click and listen to the podcast? How do I actually go about getting listeners? Well, there are really only three things that show up in a search for a podcast on iTunes, and that is the cover art, that is the podcast title, and that is the author name. So those are the three main things that show up uh, when people are searching generally for podcasts. So we, we want to focus in on how we can make those most attractive to people so that they click and will actually want to read a little bit more, read the description more, check out a few of the episodes, and then hopefully click subscribe or click listen so to actually listen to one of your episodes. So let's first dive into that cover image. So what is it that actually makes a good image for your podcast? Well, uh, I also wanna mention that we do have a worksheet that kind of goes along with this challenge that will lay out a few of the dimensions and a few of the other criteria and some resources that will help you make your image. But there are a couple things that you really wanna think about when creating your image. And number one is that you do not want to have too much text on your podcast image. Remember, people are looking at these in the iTunes store where the images are small, if they're looking at their computer, or they're even looking on their mobile device where the image is even smaller. So you wanna make sure that your title of your podcast can be read, uh, but you're not gonna be able to have too much other wording on there. If you have too much wording, it just becomes cluttered, just becomes a big mess, so you wanna avoid too much text. Number two is you really wanna make sure that it communicates the focus of the podcast. What are you gonna be talking about? What is the main topics area? You really need to make sure that your uh, podcast image kind of represents that in some way, shape, or form. That's gonna be more difficult for some people depending on what your topic is about, but you can kind of get a general idea of some very, like if you're talking about fly fishing, you know, there should be an image of a fish, a fly fish, or a, a fly on there probably, fly fishing poles, stuff like that. If you're talking about golfing, you're gonna have you know, golf clubs, greens, things like that, it's gonna be stuff that is gonna be very, very well based off of your image. If you're talking about goals, it might have a checklist or something like that. If you're talking about, uh, you know, just entrepreneurship, maybe you lean more towards the money kind of aspect. You wanna make sure that whatever your image is, whatever your graphic ends up being, is that it is communicating the focus of your show. And when we talk about communicating the focus, that's gonna include what it's about, but also who it's for. So think about both of those areas. You need to communicate the topic and kind of the general idea of the show, but then you also wanna communicate who the podcast is for. And sticking with communication, you wanna make sure that it actually communicates the feel of the show. Is this gonna be a more fun, high energy, silly type of show? Or is it gonna be a more professional, very maybe edgy, or uh, you know, what is that kind of feel that you want to come across. And that, the, when you think about feel, that's going to influence your color decisions, that's going to influence the type of graphics you use, are you going to use some more maybe classic type of imaging and lettering, or are you going to use some more modern edgy type, uh, are you going to be, you know, it, this is where uh, having being able to work with a good graphic designer is really going to help you out, or another great tool to use would actually be something like Canva. Um, they have different kind of, kind of pre-designed uh, that uh, kind of an image and a feel that really goes together well. So you can find some that really will appeal to the feel that you want of your show and select some of those templates to really at least get you st started off in the right foot if you are deciding to go the create your own podcast image kind of route. And really the last piece you wanna make sure you have is that it is actually eye attracting. This is one that is very subjective. Um, it can be hard to kind of decide if your podcast image is eye attracting or not. Uh, but the way I actually go about this with clients is we usually tend to mock up a few different potential podcast cover options. So usually we have two to three or sometimes even four. But what we'll do is I'll go in and grab a screenshot of the iTunes store. Uh, you know, where all the podcast images are out there and I will take a little image, I'll take each of the cover options and I will replace them in different aspects of that podcast. Here, I'll, I'll kind of show you an example. All right, now let's talk about actually your image and how that helps make you stand out. So let's actually go from, let's use some of the top podcasts and let's check out some of these. So you notice there are a bunch of different images here yeah, and your eye is probably being drawn to certain ones. 
uh, that are really standing out. I know which ones definitely draw my attention. Um, many of them I actually are, am subscribed to, which is kind of funny, uh, but yeah. So you can kind of see people use a variety of different podcast images. Um, and you're gonna wanna have one that is gonna stand out, be more eye attractive. But here's how I actually go about kind of deciding uh, which podcast image to use. So I will actually go through and create a screenshot. So on an app, it is, or on a Mac, it is Command Shift N3 or Command Shift 4. We can actually drag across and get a full screenshot of everything. I will then go and open Keynote, drag that and drop that in there. I'm gonna move that out of the way. And this is if I'm doing this and sending it to the client. We also have uh, our graphics team that usually takes care of this now, but this is the way I've done it for a long time. So I'll actually take the screenshot, put it in Keynote, uh, make sure I can see everything. And then I'm going to go and get the podcast cover art options. So then I'll just drag and drop a couple of the potential images in. And then basically just go through and resize them so that they are the exact size of the images there. So we'll do this with uh, basically all of our client sh shows they, and then this is how we help, kind of help the client when we send them the options, we help them kind of see what it'll actually look out, look like in the iTunes store so that they can kind of make a decision, a more informed decision based off of what things will actually look like. So we'll grab say three different images and randomly place them in three different, asp three different spots within the iTunes store. And then we'll also do the exact same thing on uh, the mobile iTunes store. So we'll go through, grab a screenshot from our iPhone, from an iPhone, and then go in and place the images just like so. Just so you can kind of see, get an idea at least of what the image is going to look like. And then you can see which one kind of attracts your eye more. Generally, a uh, personal preference for me is I like to include an image of the person, uh, if at all possible. If we have good images, I generally lean towards including an actual image because I feel like you are more connected with that per with the host of the show if the image is actually there. And so you can kind of get an idea of which one your eye is most attracted to. Which one do you naturally see the soonest, the quickest, or do you need to just completely scrap the designs you have and go with a brand new design because none of them are that attractive? So I recommend you do that for both the desktop so or laptop um, and so get that basic screen of the iTunes store, but then also go through and actually get one from your phone. So take a screenshot of the podcast app uh, where you're kind of searching through the podcast and replace that to see if your podcast cover is actually standing out from the crowd. Now, when we're talking about podcast cover art, there are a few common questions that I get. So I wanna just kind of address one of those right now and is that is, should I use an, my image or should I use just kind of a graphic representation? Well, my feeling is that in general, it depends a little bit on what your overall objective is. This is again why we had the, that be part of the day one is actually we're figuring out the foundation. So if your overall objective is to position you as an expert, to book more speaking gigs, to sell a very personal brand driven business, then I say most of the time you're gonna lean towards having your image as the cover art. The times to get when you're gonna to wanna to lean away from that is if you don't have good headshots or if you don't have good images that you can actually use in the cover art, then you're gonna to wanna to stick to more graphical elements. But if you are a very personal brand driven, personality driven business, then you're gonna to wanna to lean towards having the image uh, upfront as part of that personal brand because people are going to connect with you. They're going to want to work with you. They're gonna to wanna to build that relationship directly with you. So I'd say generally speakers, coaches, more often than not, yes, you should have your image as part of the podcast cover art. 
Now, still on the topic of actually getting listeners, the next big element you need to be concerned with is that actual description of the podcast. The description is essentially sales copy to get someone to listen to or subscribe to your podcast. So there are a few elements that should be in any description. You're gonna to wanna to have some sort of leading hook right away. And this is, could be a very simple one question, one sentence question that's kind of intriguing, that kind of draws people in. But you're gonna to wanna to have something right away up front that's gonna grab their attention and make them want to read the rest of the description. Then in the description, you're gonna talk about who the podcast is for. You're gonna talk about why they benefit from the podcast. You're going to set some expectations. So. Uh, this is a weekly podcast delivered every Wednesday, uh, and so to kind of expect that. You're going to somehow set up expectations. That can be one that you can leave out if you would like to, if you're not quite sure yet of when your podcast is going to be delivered, but I recommend you have that in there just to kind of set those expectations. And then finally, you're going to have a solid call to action, which is basically telling them to go subscribe to the podcast so that they get the weekly episodes delivered to them. And our final piece to help you get listeners is to actually have a unique episode image. And so basically for each episode you're recording, I think you should create an image for that episode. Again, you could use a graphic designer. We'll have a few resources linked up in the worksheets uh, connected to this, this day's challenge. Um, or you can go to someplace like Canva. They have, you know, where you can find a Facebook image. You can find um, several different templates for those different social media channels. And what I think you should do is basically use your title as kind of the headline of that post, as the headline of that image, and then you should create a very engaging image. Uh, the reason you want to do this is because when you have an engaging image, people are much more likely to share that image on social media, to like it, to engage with it, to actually then follow the link connected to it and listen to your podcast, because you want to make things as easy for other people to share, other people to engage with. You also, if you have guests on your show, uh, you're gonna, they're gonna be more likely to promote your podcast, the podcast episode that they were a part of, if you actually give them these unique images that is very engaging, that is very appealing, that maybe uses their image to help promote that episode. So you're gonna to wanna to hand those to people, to interviewees, so that they can share it with their audience, with their list, because that's naturally gonna help get you more listeners back to your show. So really, creating unique episode images just allows more people to share the content and bring new people, new potential listeners back to your podcast and just find out that you even exist. So the more people you can get to actually share that content, the more people you're gonna get as listeners. And the last piece of standing out is really how do you actually stand out and get fans? So we wanna basically be able to take that anonymous person, get them to click or on, on something, get them to click on your, if say the anonymous person is searching iTunes, you wanna get them from being that anonymous person to actually clicking on your podcast cover art, to read your descriptions, to click play, but then to actually go from listening to that very first episode to becoming a subscriber. That's journey of the path. They go from searching, to reading the description, to listening to one episode, to becoming a subscriber. So the only way to really get them to click that subscription button is to have amazing, high quality, very engaging, content for them to consume in the podcast. That's really your number one objective here, is you need to create valuable, very engaging content. So really the second element to actually getting fans is to make it unique. So how do you go about making sure that you are different than every other podcast out there? Are you just following a template uh, that you've heard on other podcasts or are you actually creating your own unique spin, adding your own unique twists? Maybe, and part of that could be in the way you ask questions. Part of that could be in the environment you're recording your podcast in. Maybe you're always going to different conferences, and so you're at a different conference and meet different people there and record the podcast live at that event. Uh, you know, there's multiple different ways where you can make your stuff unique. Maybe you're taking a general business practices and talking about them with, of how nonprofits can provide, can use them. Maybe you're, you know, there's multiple different ways that you can actually stand out from the sea of other podcasters, but you need to really dial it in and try to think, how can I find my uniqueness? What can I do to really stand out from the crowd? 
And then that third piece is to actually make it super easy for them to subscribe. Uh, and really one of the best ways to do that is to have a call to action for sure at the end of your show. You could make even a stock one that you always use in, as part of your outro and then just making the URL super simple. Because remember, most people are gonna be listening to the podcast while they're driving, while they're running, uh, while they're doing dishes. You know, They're gonna be doing something else in general when they're listening to your podcast. So you wanna make it so easy for them to subscribe that they don't even really need to think about it. And one of the best ways to do that is to use a plugin like Pretty, uh, Pretty Links and then go grab the iTunes store URL and create a pretty link that is, you know, yourpodcastguru.com slash iTunes. And then you're, that is the link that they use to get to the store and allows them to easily subscribe that way. So that's how I recommend you actually make it super easy for people. And the fourth way you really get fans is to actually go out there and reach them in their way. You know, there's, we talked a lot about iTunes. We talked about uh, how to optimize things for iTunes. So that is definitely one path, but is that, that is only one path to actually your content is through the iTunes store. Another way could be through your blog. Another one could be through social media, their whatever preferred social media channel. Another one could be through email. And another one might even be through transcripts. Maybe they actually wanna read about your podcast rather than actually listen to it. And so you're just gonna get a transcript of everything. You wanna be thinking of all five of those different channels and how can you make sure that I have content out there and an easy path to my podcast, to the content of my podcast in all five of those channels. So it's not just about getting something up on iTunes, it's about also making sure you have a blog post with show notes and, uh, and the URLs there and a place where they can actually listen directly from the website. I, I know many people listen from mobile and from the mobile apps, but you'd be surprised that we're still getting some podcasts, especially depending on the audience that they're talking to, some of our clients are still getting 60% of their podcast listeners coming directly from a blog post. They're listening to it on their website, on a desktop computer, not while they're traveling about uh, on their phone. So you wanna make sure that you have that avenue for people. You wanna make sure that you're reminding them about your weekly show in emails. You wanna make sure that you're sending clear calls to action on social media where they can click from social media over to a blog post or over to your iTunes page. And then you also wanna make sure that you have those transcripts there for people if they do like to read. It's just a great way to get some extra SEO bump from it, but also make sure that you're delivering things to them in the way they want to consume information. That's really what it's about, is about repurposing your content in several different ways so that's the easiest for your audience to engage with you. So there you have it. Those are really the three ways you can kind of stand out. It's all about getting uh, found, it's about getting listeners, and it's about getting fans. So it, that is day three. What I wanna encourage you to do is to actually go grab that worksheet if you haven't done so yet because it's gonna walk you through a few of these steps, a few of the things to really think about when creating it. It's because you're gonna need to create your title, you're gonna need to create your description, you're gonna need to create uh, your image. So now it's time for you to go out there and to actually take action. So go through that worksheet, get some of those things done. And what I wanna encourage you to do is to actually, once you get your image created or even a couple of your first draft options created, go uh, follow the link below and leave a comment on the Facebook page showing us your image getting the, so that you can get the feedback from the Power of Podcasting community. And really, I wanna help you make sure to tweak those podcast images and really get feedback because that is gonna be the key to actually getting those people to, to first take interest into you. You need to grab their attention with your podcast cover art. So be sure to go get that created, use a resource like Canva or use a designer and then share it on the Facebook group. And I'm really looking forward to day four. We have day four coming up tomorrow because we are gonna talk all about how to actually record your very first episode. Yep, tomorrow we are hitting the record button and we're putting content out there. So I'll walk you through everything uh, in tomorrow's challenge. But until then, go out there, take action and maximize your impact and your income.